Bernie, good morning, good sir. How are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm excellent. Looking forward to chatting with you. Yeah, likewise. Got to meet the real Moreno. There he is. And got That's to right. meet the real Bernie. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. So here's what we're going to do. I'm recording this for you. We're also going to post it. We use the video to inspire the people. Um, Perfect. We're going to spend 30 minutes chatting, see where you are, see how I can help you, whatever questions you have, help you need, anything goes, whatever you think. Okay, feel. perfect. All right. So let's get going, Mr. Bernie. How are things? Well, uh, I think I have my ducks in a row as far as I, I can tell, uh, as far as uh, getting uh, in front of the customers and get listings. Uh, that seems to be a little bit elusive, but we'll get there. We'll get there. How many years in the business? Uh, I got licensed in October. October, new, very good. Yeah, yeah, I'm new, yeah. Sometimes, and I don't really have any scientific explanation other than I think I don't have to undo a lot of damage, but my success rate with you guys who are newer in the business is higher because you don't have bad habits yet, you don't have any right. notions, so you can take off very quickly. Yeah, and, so, and uh, I moved here from uh, North Carolina to Florida, so uh, my sphere of influence is fairly small. In other words, start from scratch. Okay. Well, you're talking to the guy from Czechoslovakia, so you I and know. I were in the same boat. Except and your English is same, not And from the same neighborhood. There Austria. you go. Oh, you're from Austria? Yeah. Is that right? Which part? Uh, Swiss, Swiss border. Oh, very cool. What a yeah. gorgeous part of the world. Wow. Good place to be from. Yeah. I'm from Bratislava, Slovakia. I was born in Bratislava. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sweet. So next 12 months go well for you. How much money, how many transactions would you like to close? What's the goal? If I make uh, 15 transactions, I'd be more than happy for, for the um, first year. 15 first year, transactions. 15 tra transactions. How many dollars would that get you? How much money? Uh, four and a half million, five million. Five you million. Mean? So you're looking about 120,000, something like yeah, that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Would that be good? Would you be happy with that? Yeah, for the first year, sure. Okay, good. And what do you feel is the biggest obstacle right now? What is the biggest hurdle? The biggest obstacle is to get people to respond back. Because we, we use uh, Boomtown, which generates quite a bit of uh, activity. We follow up and it seems like uh, a lot of people uh, are just coming to the to the website to kick around and uh, they, they remain evasive. Yes. I have gone through your whole program and uh, customized everything to me. And I think I have all the systems in place and I've actually gone out and called people and have visited people. These so, are expired listings? Pardon me? Expired listings? Expired? No, uh, for sale by owner. For sale by owners, excellent, good. Yeah, so that's my whole focus right now, for sale by owner, not expired, for sale by owners. Stay with that. The best approach is to master one lead generation, then move on to the next one. You yes, want to spend too awesome. much time mastering and building and preparing. You're doing it right. Build as you go. Right. Learn as you go. Because no matter how much learning and building you do, there will still be times where it's not going to be perfect. So implementing right. while improving is the best method. Good. Correct. Excellent. Good. So how many Fizzballs have you talked to so far? Uh, probably 12, 15. 12 to 15. And what, where, where are they right now? 12 to 15 Fizzballs. Uh, I know one of them is about to uh, list with a different agent because it's a very close friend. Mm -hmm. But I've been able to establish a Good relationship that I believe uh, will eventually lead to other things. Not short term, but long term. Out of these 12 to 15, how many are you actively following up with? I follow up with every single one of them. Every single, excellent, good. The rule is, and you know this from the system already, until or unless they list with somebody else or close, sell and close, right. you keep right. it up. Right. Because it's true, they may have a good relationship. It's true, they may list with the friend sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. It doesn't always happen, and you really don't know until it happens. So one of my questions to you will be, uh, when uh, I use Zillow right now as my primary source for automated uh, notification that somebody put their place on the home on uh, for sale. Mm -hmm. So 
Would you jump into the fray of things on day one with everybody else? Would you let the smoke clear a little bit and uh, uh, give it seven days? Uh, what is, according to your experience, the most ideal time to jump in? Excellent question. The sooner, the better. Okay. Because so even though you might be in there with 10 other uh, agents. You will always be with 10 other agents, whether it's day one, day 30, day six, there will always be somebody else. Okay. What's going to distinguish you is not when, but how you approach them. Okay. Your approach being helpful, being high status, being right. low pressure, being an advisor and a counselor right. rather than a salesperson is what's going to help you stand out. Right. And I really appreciate that in your program, by the way. I really appreciate that. Yeah. You can be a decent human being and still make a lot of money is really the bottom Yeah. Line. Yeah. You don't need to be some pushy, arrogant salesperson. Right. And then other question I had, uh, yeah. you, you were saying that do not talk money until you actually have a listing presentation. Yes. Now, looking at uh, Cass Kiran or whatever you call his name, um, I went through his program and he says, if you want a, a market analysis, give me a call. I'll, I'll do it for you which would be contrary to what you're preaching. Okay, that's, that's, those are good question. You're talking about the physical package that we include as a bonus. Yes. Remember what I say on the video is this is what they use. You right. as a bonus, pull from it what you believe is right. Now, here is why I think that's not a bad idea to include. If a FISBO says, hey, make me a, make me a CMA. Right. I wanna know exactly what I can get for my house. It's called an IOI, indicator of interest. Right. And that usually happens for a couple of reasons. Number one, the FISBO is a civilian. They have no way of establishing the correct price. Yes, they go to Zillow. Yes, other agents may give them opinions. They can even get comps. But to put it together is a challenge for a licensed agent, let alone somebody who's not doing this for a living. So yes, what I want. Number one obstacle they face is to make sure that they have the right price. Now, what they're, of course, worried about is, can we get more? Yeah, so what I would do right now is I take uh, a printout from Remind because Remind gives you uh, four different uh, rough prices. It's not a CMA, but it, it gives you whatever Remind gives you, which il il illustrates the range that they're struggling with from the various sources. It back. You don't want to give them a range because if that range may be off, they will hold you to it. Well, it's more a matter of showing them that, hey, look, there are different professional sites and they're giving you this much of a stray in the numbers. Here is what I would do. First of all, do not discuss price. You know that. Don't discuss yeah. commission. Don't discuss right. any of the specifics until the presentation. My recommendation would be just to bring them a bunch of comps. Okay. And just leave it at that. Selling. Here's what's pending. Here's what's active. Homes in the area are selling from four fifty to 600000 That's it. Okay. I would not go any more specific than that. Right. I get that. And that's normally what I would do. Just leave it with them. That's perfect. Now, okay. if they say, well, tell me exactly what we're going to get for our house, you would say, fantastic. Let me prepare that though. I don't want to just guess. I want to give you a very accurate number, not what your house is worth, but what it's going to sell for, which may be two different things. Correct. Okay. And then you prepare the actual CMA, you prepare the actual presentation. We right. tell them, we're going to sit down for 20, 30 minutes and we're going to go over what is the most a qualified buyer would be willing to pay, how much cash you're going to walk away with. Right. Uh, what would it take to sell? Maybe there are some improvements, some things we can do to make the property even more marketable. Right. Then I'll show you how I get my sellers the most money possible. And then we'll see. Maybe we'll decide to work together. Maybe this sounds like a better idea than going at it yourself or maybe not, but at least you know where you stand. Okay. Other question I have based on your uh, experience, uh, and you have plenty of, how much, how much prep time would you say is adequate? Uh, because you, you talked about uh, uh, checking to make sure that you're not dealing with a realtor, look at the pictures, if the pictures have appeal, all these things are in, in indicators of what it is that you're dealing with. How much time would you say is appropriate to prep? To prep for an actual listing presentation? No, to prep until you make the first outreach to them. Zero. Zero. So you see a silo, you see a silo ad coming in, you pick up the phone, call them. Immediately call them. I want to meet them. Here is why. 
the most important factor in the process. Okay. It's their core driving emotion. It's their motivation. It's their desire to sell. It's the problem that they have that they're trying to sell, solve by selling the house. Okay. So not figured it out from Zillow or Espresso or any other way or from True. pictures. But yeah. what if what if they're a, a realtor uh, and, and it's obvious that they're a realtor? Uh, oh, then of use... course, I would skip those. Yeah, that that's obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to deal with realtors, of course. Although, when I sold one of my homes, one my house in, in Whittier, California, I used a realtor. Okay. I hired another realtor to help me. Yeah, what I stumble into also quite a bit is uh, flippers, people that uh, are in the business of, they're not a realtor, but they are flippers. So they seem to be a little bit more of a challenge. And, and they can be. But the question is this, are they, in most cases, better off hiring an agent to get the job done? Right. Are they so in the guess- business of flipping the homes or are they the business of selling the homes? Because if they were, they could have just gotten a license and do it themselves. Sure. You know what I mean? But they don't. So I always go in, can I serve this client? Would they be potentially better off under the right circumstances with me rather than doing it on their own? And even in the case of investors and flippers and wholesalers, very often the answer is yes, they're better off with me. I can get it done better. I have better tools, more knowledge, better skills. Yeah. They have other things to worry about. They can go out and get more deals. That's the most productive time they can invest in their business. Right. They're sitting there trying to sell this property. That's a right. waste of time. Even though they have to pay the commission at the end, it's still a better deal for them. So if I present it that way, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the flipper will sell it on their own. But here's the thing. How will they make the property stand out? If they can't do it through marketing and negotiation, what's the only thing left? Yeah. Price. He's a professional. Yeah, price. Yeah, price. Yeah. So they're going to lose money. And if I can sit down with them and show them, here's what you're going to net if we do this together, very often that makes sense to them. Right. Yeah. Okay. So just go after it. Use it, especially at the beginning, as a means to get better at communicating, qualifying, asking questions, establishing reporting connection, uh, establishing your status. I wouldn't be too attached at first to the actual outcome. Did I get the listing? Did it work out the way I'd like it to? As opposed to, am I really good at this shit? Right. Well, what, what I ended up doing so far is based on looking through your program, mm-hmm. I, I built a system to where uh, I can keep track of the activity and the action, the follow up. Okay. So I use a HubSpot to uh, uh, follow up with all this stuff. Right now, I spend about 15 to 20 minutes uh, to figure out who I'm dealing with. Is this even something that makes sense for me to pick up the phone? let alone sit in a car, drive an hour and a half through wild traffic, and then realize that, oh, I could have found out fairly quick by spending 10 minutes and realize I shouldn't have done this. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. But if you tell me that's too much, then I'll dial back. Well, other than the obvious, it's an agent or the property is definitely not something you want to deal with or the seller has no desire to sell, which sometimes you can tell over the phone. Yeah. conversation, but sometimes you can't. And sometimes, especially with Fizzbos who have been bombarded by a lot of salespeople, they're right. very good at hiding the fact that they're motivated, they're, they may consider listing, they need to sell. They don't want to tell you because they know that a, a, a manipulative salesperson would exploit that and try sure. to, push, you know? Yeah. So is a four, five, six, seven thousand dollar commission worth the hour and a half drive? Sometimes it is, especially you know, I was in Los Angeles where everything is at least an hour away. Fuck, I spend right. half of my life in the car, right? So, uh, use your judgment. Yes, time is important. I don't want you to just waste it, right? But if you're kind of on the fence, I'd say go, it's worth it. Okay. If nothing else, just to practice becoming a great communicator, right? That's, that's core, that's very important. Yeah, and so the thing that I would take with me is. The customized package from Cass. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. 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 Play that later. Play that later. Okay. Go strictly as let's meet each other. Let's talk for a few minutes. Have the seller qualify to you because the more the moment you start at the beginning offering gifts, you're shifting the dynamic of the relationship. Okay. You don't want to do that. You want to be equal or higher. Okay. Where my attitude walking in was, well, let's see if this is even worth my time. Right. Yeah. So you want to see the, the house yourself and get a feel for the owner. Yes, exactly. That's exactly okay. right. So I would not start with offering stuff 
you might end with it. And one thing I would bring is the list of websites where they should advertise. Keep it right. really simple. The moment you start doing packages, the moment you start offering more than just a simple piece of advice or just a connection where you become their resource. Right. You want to shift the relationship. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the package you have is great. That may come in later. As you develop more relationship with them and you become their go-to person, their resource. Okay. Yeah. yeah I have a one pager that shows uh, the for sale by owner against for sale by owner against agent assisted seller, the difference between from NAR. Don't do that. Do not do that at all. Okay. Because then again, you're trying to sell yourself. You're trying to show the benefit, which is there. Okay. It's clearly, they're clearly better off listing with an agent in 99% of the time. Always. Okay. But that has to come in later. First, you want to establish the dynamic. This okay. is who I am and here's how I'm different. This is what okay. most agents do. They try to convince right up front, you should list, here's the CMA, here are gifts, please list with me. That's the message. I need right. the listing. Right. Where you flip it 180. Okay. Let's see if the house qualifies, let's see if you qualify, let's see if this is worth my time, let's see if we can work together, let's see if I can help you, let's explore. Let's spend a few minutes, 10 minutes in a conversation. You want to focus okay. on the conversation. That's the key. Right. I get yeah. it. Yep. So all these are good tools later. Okay. When all this has been established, you want to be the guy where they're not afraid to call. Hey, I got this buyer and they ask me this question. What do I tell them? Right. Or there's a new listing that just popped up around the corner. How much are they asking for? That's, that's the relationship you want. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you're the authority. Yeah. Get it. So the trick there is as you're accumulating these physical, which is fantastic because statistically out of the 12, 10 will list in about 30 to 60 days. Yeah. Well, I can see that clearly by having, having talked to them and having visited them. I mean, it comes out clearly out of the conversation that they are about to list with somebody. Yeah. Now ask yourself this, who is the most likely agent who will get the listing? Well, the one that's um, following up and the one that stays uh, top of mind. Yes, exactly. The one they like, trust, and respect the most. Right. And how do you get there the fastest is you keep in touch. You don't annoy right. them with some sales pitches. Like you said, you're helpful, you're their resource. And you do right. it with enough frequency so they remember that you're on top of their mind. That's the so do you, have, do you have a best way to get their email address, one that actually works? that you can communicate with. All right, let me show you how that's done. It's a little complicated, but I think you're ready for it. You ready? Okay, yep. Bernie, what's your email? <laughs> it's realty at BernieLips.com. <laughs> <laughs> you ask for it. The more okay. you try to dance around it, the more you try to disguise it, the more uh, dec deceitful you try to be, the yeah, the more, they, the, the, the more resistance they give you. Yeah, you ask. Right, what if they say, I don't want to give it to you? Why not? I promise, I don't want to annoy you. I don't want to spam you, but I think there's some cool information I can send you. Okay. And if they don't give it to me, I'm not any worse off. But right. I know I will not get it unless I ask. And I have right. found that being direct, honest, and open about it is the easiest, most effective way because they will appreciate the honesty and the direction. Sure. You know what I mean? Yes. So yes. just ask, ask. If you don't have their phone number, ask. If you don't have their email, ask. Now, if they question or they hesitate, you offer a benefit. You have some cool info you want to send them. You don't spam them. You don't promote yourself. It is not about we are number one and I'm the best. Right. It is about, hey, there may be a new listing in the area. You need to know about it. There may be new things that are developing in the market that you need to stay on top of. So we'll just keep in touch. Real simple. Okay. That's it. Yeah. It comes down to if they like you and they trust you, they have no problem giving you their email. Because if right. they hesitate with the email, that's just an indicator there's not enough connection and trust. So you need to focus on that. Right. You haven't established a dynamic yet. Okay, makes sense. That's why it's so important at the beginning, especially to talk to a whole bunch of them. That's how I got good at this stuff. Yeah. I don't have any perfect. special talents. I don't have any magic skills with people. I just did it so much. You must be an idiot not to get good at it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that, that's really the answer. So it was a combination of practice, role play, and then going out and doing it a lot. Even with people who I had no desire. But here's the funny thing. If I went in with the attitude like, I don't want this listing at all. This is just for practice. 
it was the it were the people who said, "Well, what do we do next? We like you. We need your help." I'm like, right. yeah, I love that. You know. <laughs> You'll see. It's funny. So now, the so the step one is keep in touch with them. Focus on the relationship, on the trust, offer resources. You have that all in Fisborino. You know, just go down the list yeah. every four right. to seven days. You're, you're in co some kind of communication conversation with them. The best way right. is call or talk to them face to face. And then step two is just grow that list. Right. Because if you know that out of these 12, 10 will end up listing, and out of those 10, you can get one or two, that's totally realistic. Yeah. What if you had 120? That'd be right. You know what I mean? Then suddenly the 15 will become your monthly goal. Yeah. And that's totally doable. Now it's going to take some time to build the systems and the support, your staff, your skills, getting organized and all that. But you seem like a very organized guy to begin with. You're up on yeah. technology. So it shouldn't take too long. I mean, there are well, opportunities. Sure my handicap, right. I come from a technology standpoint. I used to be a computer consultant for about 15 years. There you go. So. So you're ahead of the game already. You know which tools will make your life easier and business more profitable. Yeah, I think okay. I have that under control. Good. Do you have an assistant? Not right now, no. Hire one immediately. Okay. Because this is one of the biggest mistakes I made in my business. My attitude was, I will make the money, then I'll hire somebody. Right. Totally backwards. I was sitting in front of a fireplace saying, warm me up, and then I'll bring some wood. Right. Backwards. Besides, right. I was sitting like an idiot on Saturday night, working paperwork, making copies, doing all that bullshit work. That's not fun. That leads to burnout very quickly. Yeah, but I can see that. You're going to hit the ceiling very quickly. But at the same time, you also have to keep in mind that if there is no positive cash flow on the way in, uh, you have to keep check on what flows out. But do the math with me. Let's say you hire somebody at the beginning for two hours a day. Right. Just to start with. And let's say you right. pay them, what, 12 bucks an hour. So that's 24 hours a day, five days a week. I mean, sorry, uh, $24 yeah, a day. day. So that's about, what, 120, 150 bucks a week. Right. Now you bought yourself 10 productive hours a week. Right. Imagine what you can accomplish if you have 10 hours to focus on getting leads, following up with leads, setting up appointments, doing listing presentations. Right. How much more are you going to make than 150 bucks? That's yeah, I'll take one deal. At least. Yeah, and if one deal takes one deal. Grand, is that worth $150? So you invest first, then you reap. You sow, and then you reap. Right. You know, so to wait, I need to make money. It, it, yes, you will make some money and you will get there. It's just a very tedious, slower way to do that. As right. opposed to having somebody where you can just hand off the, 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 the most uh, time-consuming laborious work you just hand off right away which is you know right. work and the admin stuff somebody right. can be trained within a couple hours how to do that for you yeah, and i think i've i've spent enough time uh going through your program to where i realize what those mundane steps are that can be delegated because mm -hmm. like you said that when it comes to like lead generation and even setting up things and even follow-up about 70 80 percent can be delegated right yeah i can see that Absolutely. And, and here's the thing, the Pareto principle, 80-20. Yeah. 80% of your money comes from 20% of the activities. So if you know that 80% can be delegated and you focus on the 20%, imagine what that's going to do to your bottom line. Yeah, that's what it has to be. Yeah. yeah. And yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight, but start on it. I'm telling you, even two hours a day for five days a week is a really good investment. Okay. Okay. Well okay. noted. Good. More questions? Uh, no, I think you answered what uh, questions I had. Good. What uh, contact management system do you use now? How do you manage all this? For what? Uh, I use uh, uh, HubSpot. HubSpot. Okay, good. Is that working yeah. for you? Yeah. Perfect. I mean, it's a good, good platform. Yeah, what I like on it is it's very customizable, so where I can adapt it to what you are coaching good. and to follow up with it. Excellent. So you're, yeah. you're up and running. It's good that it's your own, that you don't use like a broker owned, company owned. It's right. better to, to be in control of that because those are your leads, your sequences, your stuff. So right. That's the life. And I use the free version right now, which is perfectly fine. But mm -hmm. as soon as I uh, want to have more functions or have an additional person tie into it, 50 bucks a month gets you the basic subscription level. Yeah. 
Yeah, good. Well, well, you're, you're in good shape. Keep in touch with them every four to seven days until something happens. Either they list with somebody or they sell. Okay. And you'll see that there are plenty of opportunities there. Yeah, yeah it's a numbers game. Just have to work it. Yes, you have to work it while you're getting better. And right. the best thing you can focus on to get better is communication. How yes. you ask questions, how you open the conversations, how you qualify the sellers, how you establish yourself on not your average real estate agent. But you can't just go out and say it. You demonstrate. Right. Yeah, I have to. Yeah. Okay. Helpful. Sounds Excellent. good. Yeah. Yes, very much so. Excellent. Anything else? Uh, these are the questions I've had. So... Time, Stay to go, time, Stay time to go roll up the sleeves and yeah. make it happen. Yeah. And be okay with the fact that it's not going to be perfect and there'll be some setbacks and it's not going to, it's going to feel at the beginning for a little while, like it's not really working. Like you're doing the steps and you don't see the results you would like. Actually, I have been positively encouraged by what I've seen so far because the, you know, you can tell that people are very much open to list with an agent. Yes. It's just, you know, who's going to be the one? That's the matter. The and, and you nailed it. It's not going to be the best agent or the most experienced agent. It's going to be the one who keeps in touch, who's cool with them. Yeah. Helpful, who is not a douche. Right. That's it. Okay. That's it. All right. Keep Sounds me posted. Good. Are you doing the path with me? Uh, not yet, but I'm sure I'll get there. It would be good to have you because we will accelerate all this. Plus, we're going to start adding more systems to it. So, okay. Send you more info on it. Do check it out, Bernie. Yes, please. All right, good, sir. Are we good? Yes, we're good. Thank you much. It's always uh, helpful to get a little uh, shot in your arm and get to, meet, get to meet the master. I will send you the recording. If you have anything, need help, whatever, just please reach out. Let me know. Okay. okay.